And a big aloha. I'm Cindy Palos. This is Talk Story, Maui's longest-running talk show. And I just love it when um, good things happen. And the Maui Film Festival cook kicks off tomorrow at the Celestial Cinema. It's going to be wonderful, and there will be plenty of wonderful films and awards going on. Um, Barry did tell me that they have sold out of the opening night party at the Grand Wailea. That sold out. The Taste of Wailea sold out. But... The way around that is if you have a ticket that's not a ticket, you can get a ticket to the movie, but you can buy a pass. And if you have a higher-end pass, then you can get into the others. But this is the first time I've seen a lot of these other um, events sell out. But I'm here um, with a wonderful person, and I'm so glad that um, Barry's office was able to put together this um, special event where I get to talk to Raghu. Raghu Marcus is here. He's uh, worked very, very hard producing a film on Ram Dass, and I love the title. I mean, it's hmm. a mantra in itself, Becoming Nobody, and I think it's just so sure. beautiful that you picked that title because everyone's trying to be someone even more so now with all our social media and everything's geared hmm. towards being someone. So tell me um, how you came up with the title, Becoming Nobody. You know, we had a bunch of different titles, and... I think I've got to give credit to Miss Rachel Fisher on this one, who is a right-hand person to me running the Ramdas Foundation, Love, Serve, Remember Foundation. And it was interesting because a little bit later after that title, everyone went, yeah, that's great. Uh, I was uh, doing a podcast. As I mentioned to you before, we have a podcast network, BeHereNowNetwork.com, and we, I do a podcast introducing Ramdas talks and stuff. And I listened to this talk, and I made some notes. I just told him this yesterday, actually, Ramdas. And I said, all of a sudden, you said, only nobody gets free. I said, and we had picked that name before I even heard you say that. Only nobody gets free. So it all got tied together with something that he obviously had been teaching about. This was a couple of decades ago, you know. And Chris Christopherson said, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right, nothing right ain't on. worth nothing unless it's free. Yeah. But it is, it is a fascinating title, and um, I want everyone to uh, make sure they get down there this Friday. It's at 7.30, but you want to get there before. Mm, yeah. Um, you really want to get there before because there will be a lot of local people who want to see this. Of course, you know very well how mm. beloved Ram Dass is here on Maui. And mm. um, you were just mentioning, and I, we were talking about other films about Ram Dass, and, and we've been really blessed to be able to see a lot of them here on Maui, I think most of all the other films. But um, if you go to MauiFilmFestival.com and look at the trailers, I think you'll get an idea of how this film um, is really different from some of the other ones you've seen. Um, and explain how you went about that. We're, we're, I mean, there's so much material. He's done so many yeah. talks. I mean, it's amazing how much uh, we have uh, in our catalog, uh, just going back to the 60s, where even in the 60s, when he used to do this stuff at his father's farm, we have footage wow. of that. You know, him doing Sufi dancing, all this wonderful stuff. And so all the way through, and, geez, most of his talks were either just recorded and, and some of them were video. I mean, we have amazing stuff. I videotaped, I mean, way back before he moved here, one of the talks he did, and it was the Maui uh, Prince Hotel, which is now torn down, and he did a talk. And that was the one where someone he was first invited to move here. And that's when he decided to move her, and that was ages ago. It had to be 20 years ago or so. Yeah, and he's been here for about 15, yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, he's done, I mean, he's done amazing, amazing things. So the big job then would be sorting through all of this material. That took, so that's why we're talking four years. Uh -huh. And initially what happened, so the director is Jamie Cato, and he has done a beautiful move, couple of movies, one called uh, One Giant Leap, which is a wonderful picture. Uh, that's a mashup of spiritual figures saying deep, substantial things alongside of excellent music that's um, a synthesis of East-West and Africa. It's really a beautiful movie. Anyhow, he came to me and he said, I got this idea. 
I want this to be a piece that shows the arc of Ram Dass's life and his teachings that will be here for people way beyond his lifetime. Yeah. So I said, okay. I mean, I liked him also because he, he, he's a character. And he had, I knew Ram Dass, well, Ram Dass knew him a little bit. But I knew Ram Dass was going to get delighted by him. Uh-huh. Okay, because Ram Dass doesn't like people coming and interviewing him. Oh, Ram Dass, you're so great. You know, he doesn't like that <laughs> at all. Uh-huh. I mean, he's these days he doesn't have any real preferences, so that may not be true, but back in the day, certainly. And so Jamie came and did this wonderful, spent a few days interviewing Ram Dass. And out of that came a backbone for the film, which, you know, we keep coming back in the film to this interview that reflects on Ram Dass's perspective now uh, versus before the stroke, which is mm. most, most of the material that's in, the, in the, all of the material. And that, uh, that's a really fascinating juxtaposition. It's, it's really quite great. And Ram Dass was delighted with Jamie. He was so delighted. And Jamie's really honest, and his ego is well intact. You know, yeah. He's not trying to pretend he doesn't have one and all that. So that that was a beautiful thing, and from then we from there we built this. And Jamie, this was the magic that he put into it. He built Ramdas is not just the teachings, but the arc of who he is and his sense of humor and how he taught and how he. You know, it's all about identity. It's it's about role playing. You know all of the things that we are attached to our story, which is why eventually, hopefully, we do become the nobody that is of uh, use to other people because that nobody's not thinking of the me, me all the time. And so you see that in the arc of this movie. It's really quite amazing. The dropping of the ego is, is such a huge subject, of course. Yep. And, and, and obviously there had to be a lot of changes that Ram Dass went through when he got the stroke. There, uh, that, I mean, that had to be a major turning point at that point because when you're in a situation where he was so well known everywhere but then all of a sudden to change and be in a wheelchair and not being able to speak as freely yeah. and, and, and that right there is going to uh, turn your whole life around. Yeah, to know? say the least. At least. How yeah. about losing the, the in India they would call it Siddhi, power of, of communication that he had yeah. that turned on so many people. Yeah, gone like that, yeah. right? And and so he did go through, you know, a little bit of dark night of the soul when it actually happened. And then what many of us who have known him all these years. So I was, I went back to when he went back to India. I went and met him there and said, "You got." When was this? This is 1970. Okay? okay, he went back the second time to India, and then people like Krishnadas and myself and others uh, went and said, listen, we've got to meet this guru, come uh-huh. on. And so he wasn't supposed to say anything about who it was or where he was. So he said, well, I'm going to India, you know, we'll bump into each other. And sure enough, that did happen, and I did get the pass to go to the Himalayas where the guru was. And that was, the rest is history as far as I'm concerned. So and you were able to be there at the, that? Yeah, we, I was in India for about a year and a well half. Well-documented time in many of his stories now. Oh, yeah, and there's a book that called... That time when he took the acid or was given acid and yeah. nothing happened, were you there then? Uh, I was, the <laughs> second time that that happened uh, was actually just before I met him. Yeah, uh-huh. Ram Dass had seen him before I came back, uh, before I got up there. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's a wonderful book, by the way, called Love Everyone, written by my uh, an ex-wife, uh, Parvati Marcus, that is all the Westerner stories of meeting Ramdas and then going to India and how that happened and what happened from their p- perspective. It's quite amazing. Life-changing. Yeah, 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 for all these. And people like Dr. Larry Brilliant, who helped eradicate smallpox under M- M- Maharaji, uh, which is what we called him, under his uh, blessing to go do such a thing. And Danny Goldman, who wrote Emotional Intelligence. People, Krishnadas, of course. Ramdas, we don't, you know, he, was, he originated so much of the awareness about Eastern practices and so on. So that's, that is the beauty of this movie, that it's all contained in there. Mm. And, uh, yeah. So you really, that's a huge responsibility to try to have the ultimate biography 
uh, well, Ram Dass pretty much. You it's know? not a biography, it's not. actually. No, no, it's not. You, it, it's a little bit more poetically done. We weren't trying to do a biography of Ram Dass. Actually, he's got a, a, a book will be coming out next year that's his memoir that would be more of what you're talking about. Oh, actually. my gosh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. It's an Who's an, doing that, you know? Uh, he's, uh, the publisher sounds true, actually. And he's done it with uh, Ramesh Wardas Lytton, who has co-written his last couple of books with him. So, so you were gearing on the mystical, philosophical, you were trying to get the spiritual essence in this film. Was that their kind of yeah, goal? Yeah. The, the, first of all, it is a, you get well, who Ram Dass is mm -hmm. through the different historical footage stuff. And uh, there's a lot of great B-roll. You'll see when the... Th when the uh, picture opens up, Ram Dass is talking about identity, and here's a baby, and you see this 50s, incredible 50s uh, uh, film of a baby that they're experimenting with. It's, it's a little eerie. It's really far out, actually. And so this is used, you know, behind some of what Ram Dass is saying, and then you have his great ability to entertain throughout. You see mm -hmm. why so many people gravitated towards him mm -hmm. because he just made you feel good while, you know, and you, you stopped thinking about yourself so much and you were just in the moment with what he was speaking about and he was funny and entertaining. He as I said. very entertaining. And it's not just charm. I mean, I know many charming people, but there's that wisdom behind, behind it which is a directed charm that is, is very, very rare and very hard to find, as you know. Yep. Yep. Um, some of the great teachers and speakers have it, and some of the great teachers don't even want to go there and will not come close to even going there right, yeah. on that, right? Right, right? But when you do have it like he does, and then when you have the stroke and everything that happened, you do have an amazing story. Now, reviewing it, because, I mean, editing, oh, my gosh, I... I mean, I don't know who edited it. Who who was in charge of editing it? But that's a huge, huge job. Yeah. Oh no, it was. Uh, we had some wonderful people. A couple of different people, uh, Zach and Karen, and uh, uh, they uh, they were instrumental in uh, in carrying this off. You'll see when it the film opens with. I don't want to give too much away. Well, it's With on Ram the trailer. <laughs> so some of this is on the trailer. So yeah. not no, no, away. this part's not. This oh, is okay. about him. He used to do these. When he d did talks, he would lead people in, uh, in, in a Western chant kind of a thing, and he'd do it in five parts, and he'd be <laughs> leading it, and that's how it's really <laughs> – so it's really delightful, uh -huh. really delightful. So you're not you're you're not just you're not getting a dry rendering of someone's teachings, you're getting an alive, entertaining, funny transmission, which is Ram Dass, uh -huh. uh, through this through this film. I mean, would it be a, nice if you could have a transmission through a film? <laughs> that, you know that's what? a big goal. But that's it a has big a, goal. Uh, we've had people who've watched it. And, uh -huh. you know, one uh, a friend, Aubrey Marcus, who's a major podcaster in, in L.A., and uh, he, he said, wow, this is like something you can play over and over, especially if you hit a wall and you need a little help to transform some muck on a day. Uh -huh. Sit down and watch that film again. So it has that quality to it that it really can help change your perspective. Now, if you're just tuning in, I'm talking to Raghu Marcus. He's the producer of an amazing film, which I guess is the Hawaii premiere. Is it the world premiere this Friday? No, it's a special showing at the Maui Film Festival because Ram Dass is here. And yeah. Ram Dass is going to be there mm -hmm. now. <laughs> and he will be there um, um, as well, and which is a, a, what a what a blessing again, you know. To uh, has he seen it? Has he, he of course, yeah, he, yeah, he he's it. seen it. Yeah, okay. yeah. At one point, uh, in one version, because we kept you know, editing, re-editing, yeah. he goes, "You sure people want to see all of this me?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Yeah, they like you. <laughs> yeah, they want it." I, and they really do. I mean, you know, I think one, you know, everyone knows Be Here Now, but a lot of people do, could not mention one other book he's written. And a lot of people don't even know how many other great books he's written. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting to you? Yeah. 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 No, it's true. Uh, in fact, sometimes you go Ram Dass and oh, I don't know. And then you go Be Here Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so that term that he coined is, is yeah. a powerful uh, message. And it remains today. 
really what it is that he continues to talk about, presence. Uh, he talks a lot about loving awareness, and uh, it's a real practice to help get your perspective out of your head and into the center of your chest, spiritual heart, soul, whatever you want to call that thing. And uh, he's been teaching that for the last few years, and it's really effective to help people. Because you know, when you're so caught in, in believing your thoughts, believing your story, believing that's who you are, whatever role you might play, uh, it, it does take practice to get behind all of that stuff to a place that's more the true you or me and be able to look at everything that happens in your life and every day becomes a, uh, a much less uh, like an anvil on your back. Well, he now, when you're in his presence or in the room, I mean, he, he has truly, in my opinion, mm. really truly manifests that presence with a loving presence and awareness. And, and he does not even need to say a word. Mm -hmm. He's just really truly glowing with that, that presence. And, and, you know, there's people that have, there's even this guy, Bracco, you know, you can see the gaze, you feel like, but, but truly Ram does. Mm. When you're around him, you do feel that loving mm. presence, and you don't even need to talk to him. I know people go up and they want to talk, tell him how great he is and what a difference he made, <laughs> made in their life. Yeah. You know that happens yeah. all the time, right? But you don't need to. You know <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't need that, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know why people think they need to tell him. You know, you changed my life. You know, but yeah, he, he gets that all the time. But the reality is, you know, he is an after lifetime is at that place. And it's taken so many interesting experiences to get there that I'm so glad that you have all these amazing um, different parts and aspects of him being. Mm, yeah. Because um, he's gone through a lot of chapters yep. in his book yeah. of life. I uh, mean, absolutely. lots of interesting chapters. Mm. And he, he really lived through a lot of where we are now um, through that, that time that was so fascinating, of course, yeah. till now. And you did, too, I guess. You yep. saw a lot of that, right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. Uh, going back to becoming nobody, because I just yes. started thinking of a story. Uh, of, uh, I went up to see him, actually, up in his room, staying at his house. And he was just, like, shaving. And I had some organizational thing. We have to do this. We'll be Important. there then. Yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah. that crap. And he put the razor down, and he just dropped everything. And just was present with me. It was impossible for me to go on about our plans. Let me tell you, in that <laughs> moment, I I had to drop whatever bull that I had in my head, and just be talking about be here now. Yeah. It was a just be here now. Yeah. It reminded me when I first met him. I, w I told you before I worked. Uh, I was a program director of a rock and roll station in Montreal, Quebec, where I'm from. And somebody, I'll tell. It's a fun story. I'll b make it brief. But somebody called and said, hey, could you promote a lecture that Ramdas is giving at McGill University in Montreal? I go, what's Ramdas? And they go, no, Richard Alpert, Tim Leary. I go, oh, of course, I love them. Well, why don't you send over a, a, a previous lecture on the tape? So they did, and I went in the studio, and of course, it was everything that I had waited to hear all these years of what the hell is this all about uh -huh. you know and i'd done some meditation and stuff so it, it wasn't i wasn't completely raw had you done any drugs at all psychedelics of course yeah, yeah. Of course. you know that's why i loved larry and albert <laughs> right. um and then i said to them where is he i gotta go meet him and they gave me the address and i went to the house that he was staying in in montreal some people's house he opened the door there was nobody else there and I, he invited me inside and we were just standing when we first met, and he did the same thing he did the other day or week w ago, which was drop everything. There was only me in his whole universe, just me. I got complete 100% attention and presence at that moment. No different than this moment I had before. Really? And you know what that moment is? He, it, at that moment, there's no, he's no referential stuff of me you know he's the me is completely gone in that moment he's only got caring and pr uh, about me 
attention, caring, kindness. That's what I got in that moment. And I knew, and so this film, to me, is an example of that. Okay, that's what becoming nobody is. That's what the Buddhists talk about when they talk about emptiness, which everyone goes, whoa, we don't want to be nothing. It's not about nothing. It's about everything. Right. But it's about empty of being that little self, you know, that selfish little guy that and we nothing tend is to be. everything, absolutely yeah. everything, and is in yeah. nothing. And and it's interesting because as many people now meditate, and it's it's huge. The numbers are huge. You know, the account, the amount of different kinds of meditation, the amount of books. It's all huge, but it's amazing how some people don't get that it's not just that either it's really how hard people fight to just hold on to where they are right at and won't let go and mm -hmm. won't get to that stage where they can let go because that is again we were talking about the ego that is means releasing that and totally trusting yeah. enough to to let go right? that's it right there cindy trust mm -hmm. that's exactly it what happened to me that first time i met ram das trust because he gave me that complete attention and kindness and and presence i trusted everything that he said mm. and that led me to go to india and that trust you so know, you gave up your job I to gave, go to india i did, you did you, you, i had a great job by the way yeah at, yeah. at that time you know i was like 22 three years old right and i was long, running a radio station how long were you in india for at uh, that time so when i went to india i was there a year and a half Oh, you were there a long time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people like Krishnas was there you know, like two and a half years or something. You know. uh -huh. um, so you stayed even beyond the time Ramdas stayed? No, I left. Ramdas was there a year and a half. Oh, he as was? Well. Okay. Yeah. And, and I actually left with him. We went to London with a few other people. Yeah. So how do you come down from an experience like that, a year and a half there with the, the guru and in, in his teacher in, in India? And, and it's got to be, you know, the vibrations, that what the experience is, it's very uniquely different than where you'd been and where you're going to go. So how do you make that transition? I tell you, after a few months and when I was up in the Himalayas where all this was taking place, I, I remember one day going, wow, I feel home. This is home. Wow. I felt so comfortable there, way more than I did here. Now, that's also because of being a confused, lost teenager angry blah blah and then suddenly something woke me up you know in my tw early 20s there and so that feeling of home was beyond uh, the country the land which is steeped in this ancient ancient heart wisdom it, it was the being who meeting someone like this who is an example of what we can be unconditionally loving that's mm. what Ramdas talks about all the time and so that at that point when I met him, I knew that, okay, I'm fine now. Only thing is, we're going to run off a bunch of karma over the years, and I've managed <laughs> to do that quite well. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I don't think people realize, because, you know, there's such a thing for I want enlightenment, and, you know, there's this hunger for enlightenment, and, 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 you know, some people get enlightenment, and they don't realize that that enlightenment isn't the final thing. It's living and how you live after that place and that well, state. And yes, your perspective's changed. I'm sure your perspective changed, but it's still, how do you bring that back to your life? And, and again, time and time again, in Ramdas and what you do, there's service, service, service. Yep. You know, it's yep. a loving service, and it's, it's not easy, even with that. You know, mm. it's not easy because there's lots of people wanting a lot of things, and then there's the interpretation of how you serve, yeah. right? Yep, yeah, yeah. And by the way, when we talk about enlightenment, I think no one is enlightened unless they are doing nothing but for other people. There is mm -hmm. no you anymore that cares. In the movie, by the way, again, going back to becoming nobody, which this is all good stuff for me, uh, at one point Ramdas sa says something like, you know, when is what do I want mm. just old news? When is what do I need? enough you know can you s take the next step which is what can i do what service can i do and that completely changes the game that's to me enlightenment uh, is when you are no longer interested in satisfying or pushing away desires or pushing away suffering and you are really there for anybody 
that happens to be around you. That, that to me is real. And that's what this enlightenment, and that's what this film, that's what this becoming nobody. So there's one little thing. It's like the essence of the whole deal. I mean, that's why uh, Neem Karoli Baba, our guru, Maharaji we call him, our only instructions, because he didn't teach, he didn't give lectures, he didn't do anything except love everyone, serve everyone, and remember the divine. Ramdas went through um, a withdrawal of sorts. I mean, it's always hard when you have someone you love as much as he loved his teacher uh, pass on. No. You don't think he did? Mm -mm. Oh, interesting. I, I thought he went through. We all did. All oh, yeah. of us. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God, we were completely screwed up. Oh, it was horrible. But Ramda, like when we were with the guru, Maharaji, in India, so there'd be a bunch of young Westerners, and Ramdas was like 15 years older than us or something, uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, th you'd see Ramdas. We were all like, how can we get near this thing and hang on to it and get that, you know, whatever it is. Ramdas hung back. He was not, he was not about the body. And now he, A, he was, you know, a little bit more mature than us. And A, and B, he had been there before. Mm -hmm. And when Maharaji passed, he said this in, in talks. It wasn't, it, it was a seamless thing for him in terms of the, he, the conversation that he had with Maharaji continued. It wasn't broken by mm. a body. And Maharaji has proved over these, proof like he needs proof, over these many years, how many people, like coming to these retreats we do in Maui with mm -hmm. Ramdas and Krishnadas and, and others, just absolutely open up in a way as if he was sitting there. And mm -hmm. that's coming through satsang community. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the most important thing that we have found in this whole process of doing these things here and, so, and, and doing them in California, these retreats, s is the gathering together. What that means is, is uh, so invaluable, so invaluable. Can you do it on your own? You can do it on your own. Um, but it's just, it's, you know, it's like uh, they say in India, in the Kali Yuga, which we seem to be in, you might say, you know, the age of destruction. I mean, we have a few things that are going on that say that. Um, all you need to do is repeat the names of God. Okay, that's it. Sounds simplistic, but that's, you know, trying to think your way through this stuff is very, very difficult, right? So, um, yeah, so that's... Uh, um, the common denominator for us is doing chanting. I mean, Krishnas, you know who Krishnas is. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, I've had a chance to interview him with yeah. him. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, great. And uh, that really represents what we brought back as a practice. Yeah, I, I do it alone, mm -hmm. but I love to do it with people mm -hmm. because there's certain vibration that's set up when people, what did Christ say? Two or more in my name, there mm -hmm. I am. And it now is to the point where you're seeing more and more of the chanting, the music yep. um, is out there. So people can have that and listen to that. And um, But but Ram Dass is 88 years old now. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, I think it's been about a month since his birthday. Yep. Me, yeah. Well, month. April, May, yeah, month and a half, sort of, yeah. And he has gone through health challenges. Oh, yeah. It's been a tough year, although he's doing pretty good right now. And and so I know a lot of people thought, well, this might be it, this might be it, you know, is he, is it, is it his time yet? I mean, and who knows, you know, mm. I mean, God knows, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people didn't know. Um, but then there was that, wow, what are we going to do without Ram Dass for the people who were in his inner circle and the people who have loved him and you've known him most of your life, more, you know, right since you were 22, you've known him, right? Yeah, 23, something like that. So, so in that transition stage of knowing that, you know, he may not be around a lot longer. Um, although he is going to go to New Mexico, isn't he? Which blew my mind. I heard he's going to, oh, I can't say that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but I mean, there's things, you know, you go, what have I learned? There's a little retrospection and, and um, preparation. I'm sure, did you ever feel like there had to be some, that you needed to have a little detachment 
because this may happen, or did you have more attachment because you thought he may not be around next year? Or did, did I mean, how do you react to this? That oh, it's one complex, of your closest yeah. friends is it yeah. may not be around, you know, next year or whatever. I you mean, know? it's. I mean, there will be grief. Uh, and but Ramdas, this is an important thing, actually, point to make, and something he talks about all the time. We as humans can live on more than one plane of consciousness at the same time. So there will be, as a human, grief, and there will also be the plane of love that we share and that anyone shares with a beloved. That doesn't stop. Who you are, truth, call it soul, the Buddhists call it no soul, whatever it is, that doesn't stop. Thank and you. I know that that communication Now, that's so important, and I'm so glad you brought this up because a lot of people are so focused, you know. And, again, you think if you've got to be here, you might try to really be here. But there's got to be that when you're really here and present, there's, there is multi-dimensions. There is, I mean, beyond space and time, that yes. somewhere some opening happens when you're really in that presence that doesn't limit you. And, and and that is such a key, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, yes, the chanting can get you, I think. But I think that it comes to some point where inside yourself, you just are you started in the beginning of this conversation to talk about being free. Yeah. Being free enough to uh, really experience that, you know. And sometimes and with all that we have, we actually make it harder. Yeah. Um, in this day and <laughs> age, sure to, <laughs> and, uh, right, and as well as much as we know, after all these years of supposed mm. the era in the '60s where all this awakening was happening, I sometimes wonder, you know, gosh, what does it take to really get to that point? And I, I think you really seem to have tried to capture that in this movie of becoming yep. nobody. Absolutely, absolutely, and I hope everyone gets it. I think, I think they will. Uh, you know, we've obviously played it a couple of different small audiences, as test audiences and stuff, and and they do. I mean, you you can't not. There's just so much incredible wisdom, and so much heart, and that's really what Ramdas represents. So it sounds like this was truly um, a true labor of love oh, for you, right? I mean, absolutely. this was like this is this is your love gift. Yeah, absolutely. And to see that it'll go forward beyond Ramdas's lifetime and people can experience him throughout the arc of him coming back from India is really great. Well, we have about three more minutes, and I have to ask you in retrospective, mm. you know, having so many dreams that we had in the 60s and, and all the potential um, of the new age or whatever, this age of Aquarius or whatever is supposed to be there, um, between then and now, um, do you look back and, and do you think that we have achieved what we were dreaming to achieve in the 60s? Or do you look back and going, gosh, I thought it would be a little different, <laughs> you know, having all these years of experience, um, knowing all this wisdom and knowing what we could do to society. Do you ever look back and, 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 and see, is this what we really thought it would be like? The only thing I look back on and wonder a little bit is we were selfish in our absorbing this wonderful wisdom from the East. For, for me, I was absorbing. Mm-hmm. Many. And many, uh, yeah. many of us. And, uh, and then there was people who all they did was uh, action, social action, activists. It's true, yeah. And there wasn't... Now, I see n- this next generation, this you know, millennials or whatever, coming up, and they are committed to... Well, they'd better be social action and activism around a variety of, of themes, at the same time, they want to clean up themselves as well. So they want to work on themselves. They want it, mindfulness. They want to do meditation, yeah. chanting, whatever it is. They want to really, uh, as, uh, and this is Ram Dass's thing, he, he for many years would advise all kinds of different uh, social networks and a social venture network, which was one uh, at the time which brought together entrepreneurs to do good in the world. You can't do anything unless you, if you get your heart straight, then you have a chance at helping. But that doesn't mean you you wait till that happens, because that could be a lot of lifetimes. But you do it while you're doing social action. But so many got so blissed out that all they wanted to do was maintain that bliss and that that may have meant drugs or whatever. But 
but so many were people were totally blissed out um, that they didn't realize that that bliss, addictive bliss, sometimes can keep you from exactly getting back yeah. to work, right? Yeah, well, that's, uh, Trungpa Rinpoche called that spiritual materialism, right? It's and true. We have that, and we have spiritual bypass. We have, a, you know, a lot spiritual of stuff. Spiritual bypass, that, I haven't heard. That's spiritual a new one. bypass is where you take everything that you roles in your identity and shift it over into I'm a spiritual being. Oh, that self righteousness I call it spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I, I have a term I created too, spiritual rationalization. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which we can thing. rationalize yeah. anything, right? Yeah, if yeah. you t- well, from a spiritual point of view, and yeah, <laughs> just yeah. write it exactly. off with a spiritual rationalization, That's really right? Bad. <laughs> 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 but it's 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 really wonderful to see that you've taken this um, opportunity mm. and what you've done for a lifetime and and been able to put it into a movie, which is not an easy. It's not easy to do. There's a mm. lot of work and a lot of dedication and a lot of responsibility involved yeah. in doing something like this. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that because it's all true. No, I know it is. And it's, 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 it's doing a film in this level. It's like a lot of people going, oh, I don't know. Or they, you know, but you, took, you went right for the heart of the matter on this one and um, went yeah. after it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Again, it's this Friday at 730. I get mm. there a little bit early. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be a lot of people there, and it's going to be. Um, I think. I think we're very blessed to be able to show it here on Maui with Ram Dass present. Yeah, that, and that's really the purpose of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I appreciate you taking the time with the busy stuff going on to come down and talk to oh. us live in the studio here too. It's wonderful, Cindy. I, I appreciate you. It was really great. Thank yeah, you. well, well, it's it's really you know it's it's wonderful to have these conversations, and it's not often that I get a chance, so I always get excited when I can. <laughs>